I think it's fair to say that we have a lot of Linux distros. And with that comes a distro for basically any use case. We have regular day-to-day -day distros. We have gaming distros. We have business distros. We have science distros. And we even have spyware distros. And I think it's also fair to say that we probably have too many distros, considering the fact that a lot of these distros exist in the exact same niche, but aren't offering anything new. So it seems like there is a lot of wasted effort being made, just not really achieve anything. Not to say that you can't go and make your own distro if you want to go and make it. If you want to do that, be my guest. But there is one very important question. How many distros do we actually have? And is this problem getting better or worse? And there's one site that's been around for a really long time, which attempts to keep track of this distro-related data. That site being DistroWatch. Now, I've discussed in the past, I'm not really a big fan of the way that DistroWatch handles their distro rankings, but when it comes to being a news feed and a general database of distros, I feel like they do a really good job. And a little while back, they put out this Q&A going over DistroWatch data, the data on the users, data on database trends, and things like that. This is a really good read, but there's one part I want to focus on today, that being this graph down here. Historically speaking, ask, it would be interesting to see a database summary graphed over time, one, five, or ten years, and see what trends might be picked up from the data. And Jesse answers, I like the way you think. I did a dive into the stats for the past dozen plus years, June 2010 to June 2022, and graphed the summary numbers for our database. The y-axis shows the number of projects in a given category, while the x displays the number of weeks since June 2010, in this graph right here. In no specific order, the blue line represents the active distros. DistroWatch defines an active distro as a distro that has still got a active site and is being updated on a regular basis. It doesn't have to be updated every day or every week, but it is still being updated with some form of frequency. The green line indicates the waiting distros. These are the distros which are trying to be listed on DistroWatch, but currently do not have a page available. So they've applied to the site, but the maintainer hasn't got to them in the list, so not part of things like the page ranking or the news feed tracking and things like that. The red line indicates the dormant distros. So a dormant distro is a distro that has not had a published release in a set period of time, but the site is still active. So you'll see a lot of distros that pop up, do a few releases, and then just sort of die, but not completely. Like their site is still up, but nothing's really happening with them. And then the yellow line indicates the discontinued distros. So like with the dormant distros, it hasn't had an update in a set period of time, but unlike the dormant distros, their site has also been taken down. So maybe the dev just doesn't want to keep paying for the server or whatever other reason they have, but this distro is completely dead. So there's a couple of interesting takeaways and things to keep in mind when looking at this graph. Firstly is with the active line. So you'll notice that generally it sits around 300 with the most variation being in the waiting list. So theoretically, you could take that entire waiting list and then just dump it into active. But the reason why active tends to sit around 300 is 300 is a reasonable amount for the maintainer to track for things like the news feeds, announcement, the database size, the ranking, and things like that. But if we take active plus weighting, it gives us a better representation of how many distros are actually active. I say representation because not every single distro is going to want to be listed on DistroWatch, but it does give us a general trend of how many distros are actually available. So there seems to have been a steady growth from 2010 up until about 2013 or so, with a dip happening seemingly out of nowhere, and then another growth happening until the end of 2014, with another dip happening, and then the waiting list has only been going pretty much down since then, and then leveling off in maybe the past two or so years. I'm not certain on why this dip happened, but considering the fact that it affected all of the lines, I'm guessing there was like an adjustment in the way the database was being handled, and a lot of stuff was just being cleared out. 
And considering the jump in Discontinued, my guess is there was a lot of things sitting inside of the waiting list, which had been in the waiting list for so long, that by the time the maintainer actually got to them, they were already discontinued and went straight to that list. But for the overall data, it's hard to make an assessment on how many distros have been in that state over time. So just looking at the data as it is, it seems like the highest amount of distros at any one point was around maybe 670, 650 or so, with the lowest point being around 450 in roughly 2018. Honestly, from what I've heard about the general Linux landscape, I would have expected this green line to be like flipped around. So this to be over on this side and this to be over on this side with like a peak being maybe in like 2021 or early 2022, for example. But the actual peak was around eight or so years ago. Now discontinued is a really interesting line because this generally goes up in a fairly steady rate. What this shows to me is that there is a lot of distros being made out there which don't really have any reason to exist. It's just effectively a glorified install script that someone made for themselves and then probably one of their friends said, hey, make that public, but they would never actually planned to maintain a distro, so all of these distros get dumped out onto the internet, but nobody's actually doing anything with them. I'm sure that some of them do get maintained for a brief period of time, but then people realize, wait, maintaining a distro is actually a lot of work, and I don't have the time or the energy to actually go and do this. So over time, this number just rises and rises and rises. And what it also shows us is, I don't think there is a single point in this list where there is a reasonable drop. Maybe some of these distros do actually come back, but most of the distros that are made that get discontinued are just dead and that's the way they stay. And the dormant line sort of backs up that theory as well, which is basically a straight line with a couple of little dips here and there and this one big jump where all of the lines moved at the exact same time. So you're probably seeing a lot of distros out there where they'll make like one or two releases, they'll try to get listed on Distro Watch, they don't really continue with it, and by the time they get listed on the site... The site's still active, but nobody is actually bothered to keep developing it. Now, if the only distros we were dealing with were the active and the waiting distros, it wouldn't be that big of a deal. Sure, 500 distros is still a lot of distros, but over the past 10 years, that number has come down a little bit and then flatlined in the past couple of years. The problem that I see is we're not always dealing with the distros you should be using. There is still a lot of media outlets out there that will recommend distros that don't make any sense, that are completely dead. Like, before the Steam Deck came out, you would still see articles recommending SteamOS 2. I've run across a couple of them recently, and I don't know how they still exist. Just in case anyone forgot, SteamOS 2 was based on Debian. It was based on Debian 8. Debian 8 Jesse, which some people watching this channel probably weren't even using Linux when that came out. That came out in 2015. I think all the blame in that regard falls on the outlets who are recommending these very dead distros. None of the blame lies on the new Linux users because if you see an outlet that is it seems like it's from 2021 or 2022, recommending something like SteamOS. You're going to think, hey, this is being recommended. Clearly, this is something that I should be using because if you're new to Linux, why would you know what options are available? If you know what options are available, you wouldn't be reading an article like that. I think over time, this is getting a little bit better, partially because the media outlets are slightly getting better, but because a lot more attention is being put on the individual creators. So rather than going and reading like top 10 Linux distros from whatever random Linux outlet, you go and watch a Linux reviewer on YouTube and they're like, hey, this is what this distro does. It's like a 
20 or 30 minute video, it might still be a fairly surface level look at what it actually is, but it gives you a better representation on what you can actually see with it. And anybody who's being honest there isn't going to go and look at something that is just completely dead. If they're going to go and look at a distro, it's going to be something that someone might actually want to use. And at least since I've been using Linux, there seems to be this growing focus on distro bases. So rather than going and using some like random weird fork of Arch or Debian or Ubuntu or Fedora or anything else like that, go and use Arch, go and use Fedora, go and use Ubuntu, and there are still some recommendations of forks, but they're more established forks. There seems to be this sort of consolidation of users into a lot less distros, rather than being spread out across, you know, hundreds of different options. Not to say there still isn't a lot of spread, but it is starting to sort of come back together. And I wouldn't be surprised if that is part of the reason, leading to less overall active distros, but I'm sort of just spitballing here and, you know, I can't really read everyone's minds, but what do you think about the state of Linux distros? Do you think we have too many? Not enough. We need maybe hundreds of more distros. I would love to know. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. If you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe to Sonic Barrow, pay link in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over T. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robinson Plays. That's going to be it for me. And I'm out.